Hello, buddy. I want to make. I want to say this before we start. If you hear like any background noise, that's my window. My, my window's open for some fresh air. So just want to point that out. But anyway, hello, everybody. Welcome <laughs> back to episode thirty-seven. Yeah, it's been a while since I did, the, I did one of these bad boys. I welcome back to episode thirty-seven of the Broken Cast. And on this podcast, we talk about anything that I feel like. Tokyo, comic books, anime, anything. <laughs> but uh, today, we are here to review, well, Geats. Oh boy. If you watch my Revice review, you know how I felt about Revice. And uh, don't worry, my opinion is totally different from that. I don't hate Revice as I used to. It's just, it was a letdown in my opinion. Moving on. So, Geats. The latest commerce season that just ended. Look, last night, but I just fit. I just came back like three hours ago from seeing Blue Beetle. But uh, yeah, I, I sat down, watched episode at, after watching that movie, and uh, I loved it. I guess we're going. To, I guess we're going to the characters. Uh, Ace, you kill Ace himself. Okay, <laughs> I have a hot take. For people that are complaining and bitching, I'm talking about you, Tokyo community, aka Tokyo Twitter. For people in the community that are bitching, complaining about, about saying, Ace is too overpowered, Ace is too this and this. I want to say that. Where's the same freaking, where's the same criticism for fucking, for fucking Kota or, or Sukasa from Gaiman Decade? Both are overpowered as shit. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see no hate for both of them. But oh no, only for Ace. And yet this is the same this is the same thing of that that complaint about the show had way too many common writers, but yet Gaim and Ryuki has way too many as well. But oh no, those shows are fine. If Geets does it, Geets bad. I swear the Tokyo community's hypocrisy doesn't the Tokyo community hypocrisy in general just make me laugh. Because I find it the ironic that the same logic they have with this show and complain about this show can be saved for past other battle royale shows. But I'll go on back. I'll talk about more about that when later. But back I was saying, Ace, he's the mind of Tendo. <laughs> the whole time I've watched it, I said to myself, yeah, he he gives off Tendo Soji vibes. And I think that's what Takahashi, you know, Takahashi was trying to go with, get him a. Tendo Soji vibe, but a little bit of, well, Tsukasa from Decade, maybe a little bit of Kazuha, Kazuha Bakota from Gaim, but but more Tendo Soji vibes. And I loved it. <laughs> he, he had the exact, his actor did a good job. He had the exact same vibe as Kota, not Kota, as Tendo, because Tendo's an asshole too, but yeah, he's a little boy asshole. Ace is the exact same thing. He is as well, and I loved it. Granted, his character got a little iffy in the middle, but uh, still, I like I like what I like what I, I love what uh what Takashi did with his with his arc overall. <laughs> oh god, Ace doesn't feel like okay. The last time I fell in love with a main writer protagonist from Kamara's show that isn't Weavice, that isn't Black Sun, because Black Sun is a special, moved out of the way, was Sento from Bill. Because I got, frankly, when I'm watching this show, around, let's say, the beginning of the second arc, the show, uh, Give me a snap and a wake up saying, fuck. Say, holy crap, I actually like this show. And I got Build vibe from watching it. And uh, for those that know me, I love Build. I will defend this show to the very day that I die, die. <laughs> I got Build vibe from Geets as well. Because I felt like this, I felt like this show got way too much hate. Just like Build does. Granted... I want to be too. I want to be honest for saying that the same people that complain about Bill second half being boring or awful or 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 saying that Evo is the worst main villain in Kamen Rider. 
We have the same criticism for X Aid and many other comedy shows. Just saying, cause same lot can go for them as well. You know it. So anyway, back on as I was saying, I uh, Ace doesn't feel like the last time. Okay, the last time I felt like I fell in love with a comedy protagonist was Sento. And Ace gave me the an Ace. An ace of uh, an ace woke me up. <laughs> the show reminded me about that. I was like, "Yeah, I love the show. I like Ace. He he's the modern day Tendo. I don't care what anyone says. And uh, he's way better than Toma and Iki and Otto. I'm just gonna be honest. I like Iki and Vice. Don't get me wrong, but still. Overall, uh, I I have like no issue for Tendo. <laughs> With Ace as a character, granted Takahashi did pull a lot, a lot of BS with him, saying cause his whole arc was basically did. Beginning of the show, Ace, Ace basically said, "Oh yeah, trust no one, cause if you do trust someone, they're gonna betray you." The the middle arc, Ace Ace's whole character basically became, basically became trusting others and the power of friendship can defeat anything. The last arc, Ace become God. <laughs> Ace becomes God. <laughs> Ace literally became a god. That's it. He just became a god. He pulled a coat up at ten times better. Said, "Oh yeah, uh, with my new power up, I'm now a god." <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Grant is common writer, and uh, what do you expect? Because the same people that complain about about Ace becoming god out of nowhere are the. <laughs> I don't see are the. I want to say this. The same people that complain about Ace becoming a god out of nowhere are the exact same people that complain that that not complain that that praise Coke to, not Coke to, Toma from Saber for being literally an almighty being with an overrated power up. Just saying, because you guys complain about Ace, you guys complain about freaking Ace being this all powerful god. With this same complaint for fucking Toma, hell, for fucking Kota, for many any other any other comic protagonists. If you're gonna complain about this one character, the same way to go for this other character too. What the fuck, man? I don't get the Tokyo community because they they because they love to complain about the dumbest things. Anyway. Ace's, Ace's final arc is basically in him saying, Oh yeah, oh yeah. With, with the help of my dead mom, who I talked to for like for like five seconds in one scene, she helped me she helped me make some type of plot armor device to help me defeat you and become a god. It's the most bullshit thing in Conrad, but granted, this is Conrad, right? and every, and let's be honest, Conrad had a lot of bullshit in those seasons. I'm talking about you, XA fans. You know it. So, Ace becoming a god out of nowhere make it just funny, hilarious, and stupid, but I love it at the same time. So, moving on from that. Uh, Tycoon, oh boy. <laughs> now, I have, I have something to say about this. I love, I, I love, I love uh, Yuga Sato. God damn it. <laughs> the guy gave a amazing performance as the modern day version of Kagami. Yes, he is Kagami. Granted, you can say that he's like, granted, you can say that he's somewhat like Banjo as well, but I got more Kagami vibes than Banjo vibes from him. He's the modern day version of Kagami from Kabuto. And I love it. Kugami embodied what it meant to be a comrade by 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 caring for everyone else except for himself and protecting the peace. Ichigo basically the same way. He wants only peace and justice. And and protect all those who can defend themselves against evil. K was the exact same way. That was his whole entire arc. Hell, Kekara, his supporter. Basically pointed out too, saying that I'm gonna turn you from a wimp into a common rider, and that's basically Kawa's whole arc. And also, for Delta complaining, saying that he's like Michi. First off, 
Hold on. My chair's acting weird. First off, I want to point this out. Number one, k is nothing like Michi from Gaim. Let me explain. Number two, that's no, let me explain. In Gaim, Michi basically became all evil and depressed just because a girl that he, just because his girl, who's a fr just because the girl that he liked, who was his friend, wasn't interesting in him. And he went all evil killing, he went all evil, he went all evil killing his brother, killing Kota, and basically making the whole world population almost be slaves to the Helheim Forest. Tycoon <laughs> came out over here, literally has, literally went through a Batman slash vengeance arc. Just because Buffalo killed his sister and he wanted revenge. Hell, at least, hell, at least K Wall's arc is way better than Daiji's and me. And not me, Scott. Not me, not gonna know. At least K Wall's arc is way better than Daiji's and Michi's. Daiji's whole arc and revive was basically yin and yang. While I like that arc, looking back at now, it could have been better. And for God's sake, k -Wall, for God's sake, you guys, k -Wall was just protecting his last member of his family. Keikyo even realized this as well, then the show that, uh, oh yeah, in, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, Sparrow, kill this guy, sis, kill my, uh, kill my, uh, kill my, kill my, uh, kill the Kill my man's sister right now, so 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 he become a true common writer, and he basically turned him. He basically did that, and uh, well, K. Y. became a common writer in a different way. Perfect example of this. K. Y. didn't kill anybody. He didn't slay mankind like Michi did. Like Michi did. He he didn't get anyone. He didn't get anyone hurt, unlike what Michi did. And also, he wasn't simping for anyone, just like Michi was. He wasn't te well, you know, I can't say. He did team up with the enemy, just like Daiji did, so that one's fair enough. But every but everything else I said, he what he isn't like Michi. The dude went the dude went on a on a vengeance arc. Which which was part of his character for him to realize what it meant to be a common writer. As a common writer, you cannot protect everyone in your power. And that's just unfortunately the truth. Always talk about this. Bill, Help, Drive did, Zio, many other comedy seasons talk about this exact same thing. And that was one of the points for k arc when he got Bujin, when he got his Bujin form. As a comrade, you cannot protect everyone if you want to. Perfect example is all of those are those Argon Zero One. He wanted to protect all the human kids, but at the same time, even he knows that uh, yeah, yeah, I can't protect, I can't protect everybody. In episode three, what? For example, this, I can't remember. I can't remember to say this. In the one episode when Check It Out dies, hear me out before anyone before anyone comments on my on my comments before anyone type in my comments. I want to say this. I do not. I do not like this episode. I hate it with pretty passion for for a reason. And if you know, you know why. Let me finish. In that episode zero one, Arthur was trying to protect, trying to protect the image of human gears. Well, well, Guy Machu was the opposite, trying to expose how human gears are threat to humanity. And uh, Arthur was not having it. And uh, well, unfortunately, Arthur took the took the biggest uh. Okay, that's weird. 
I still took the biggest L from that episode. And uh, if you know why, you know why. So why am I trying to compare this to uh, Tycoon? Otto couldn't say check it out. He couldn't save his company. But he couldn't save. He couldn't save check it out or his company uh, image or the human gift in it. He failed. KY, on the other hand, when he when he when he brought back the world back when he brought back sister from the dead, he failed to save her. Like literally, he failed to save her. And unfortunately, hold on, hold on. Stand that I couldn't stand that the air blower, the leaf blower. Anyway, back to saying when K when K brought back his sister from the dead, he thought, "Oh, that's cool! Finally, I saved my sister, so I no longer got to go on my on my revenge arc." He failed, and uh, he wasn't happy because he realized that uh, he can't save everybody. His parents died when he was young, right in front of him. He, Buffer killed his sister, and when he brought back his sister, she died again. And he, and he failed to save them all. What it mean to be a true comrade? That uh, yes, there are mom yes, there are mom yes, there are a lot of moments that you have to sacrifice the loved ones in order for in order for you to move on. That sucks. I can't even say it like that. Let me explain. V Vice. Okay. The whole show was talking about family, right? In the final episode, Vice and Iki treated her like brothers. And uh, in Vice, basically, in Vice's whole arc was based in him trying to make Iki well. Trying to in the final battle, basically, Vice was trying to make Iki to move on and forget about him because, well, Vice is life. Well, well, Vice is his life. He can be, he can move on and get ready for for the future. Hell, the fucking um, Gichin Revice movie talking perfectly about about the future, and that's why I love that movie. The show talk about the, the show talk about Iki's desire to keep Vice, but uh, even he knows that he can't keep Vice with him for all that long. The reason why I say that because I think that was, I think that is what Takahashi was trying to do for Kawa's arc when he in his vengeance arc for the final for the final act of the show. Did it land perfectly? No. Was it? Was it semi good? Yes, that's why I like Kawa. He's the embodied man what it meant to be a common writer, just like Kagami. Hell, if I'm gonna be fucking honest, another secondary that that I feel like that that felt like that that felt like the exact same thing is Bonjo. Even though I did say that uh, he didn't, you know, even though I did say that Tycoon did not give up Bonjo vibes. Bonjo, Bonjo delivery by me as well. It meant to be a common writer. And the, in H.H. Generation Final, my favorite common writer movie, the whole movie talked about what it meant to be a common writer. Forze, O's, Gaim, Bill, XZ. <laughs> Fuck, who am I forgetting? Yeah, Ghosts! They all talk about, while fighting, while fighting the enemies, what it meant to be a common writer. Didn't Bonjo realize what it meant to be a common writer? That's why I love that movie. Kawa, Kawa found his reason why it meant to be a comrade through his whole arc, and that's the point of it. And for those that complain, saying that oh, Kawa didn't do this and this, yes, of course he didn't. 
He's not like other secondaries, you idiot. Sorry for, excuse me for that, saying that, but for, for God's sake, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you, you guys put this show on a high pedestal, wanting to be like Miyuki or Dime or fucking Blade. No, I love Blade, just hit me up. Or x No, it's not supposed to be like other Battle Royale shows. Because it, because it irks me how people were complaining that this show wasn't like Gaim Ryuki. We had those shows, those shows don't, in my opinion, Gaim is the most overrated one out of them all. Ryuki is the most average one. And yet, I don't, yet, you got, yet, you guys complain about this fucking show. I read too many common writers when those two shows exist. And yet, oh no, those shows are innocent. This one is it. The hypocrisy baffles me and it's stupid. <sighs> Sorry about that. So, that's what I was saying. That was the whole point of k arc. I'm gonna guess Takahashi, before watching Geats, he sat down, binge Revice, and said, you know what, there are a few things I could take from this show and put in Geats for k and Neon's arc. And, uh, yeah. Speaking of Neon, let's talk about everyone's favorite female tertiary. Yes, it's a tertiary. She's not an extra. That's Buffa. Moving on. Neon! Oh, boy. I, got, <laughs> I have a hot take. I actually don't think Nia deserved all the hate. Granted, her arc wasn't the her arc wasn't fully perfect, but uh, I felt relatable to her and Tycoon for for personal reasons. I want to say that no, my family had not abused me. That not that part is not relatable for me. No, she wants to find her own life and purpose. Outside of her family's legacy, or outside of her family, and that's what I love about her character. Because I'm the same way. As someone who freaking, <laughs> while working at my old job, I, my my old coworker, trying to make jokes, say, "Oh, haha, Aaron, you're gonna be here forever." I'm like, "Yeah, no, that ain't happening." And uh, around about well, this year. After I had enough of, the, of that place treat um, of my old job treat me like crap. Granted, that place that that place was that place was pretty bad for my uh, <laughs> for my anxiety as well. I had a, I got annoyed. I got frustrated. Cause I couldn't stand it, so I left that place. Yeah, I found a new job. Do I like my new job? Fifty fifty. But uh, back on I was saying. I can't. St <sighs> Nia's arc was basically her trying to find her own person in life. Reminds me of me what I'm trying to do right now. I'm on a journey right now, trying to find my own, my own person in life. And I felt the exact same connection to her character. Also, her instant song, basically her being, basically her talking about being her own person. That's basically what. That's basically what Neon's intro song is all about. Her trying to be her own person without, without being without being anyone's shadows. And that's what I like about her arc. But yeah. Do I like a better Sakura? Well, let's see. Neon has an arc. Neon has a character. She has a better final form than Gene. And, uh, well, what, what else can I say? Oh, yeah, her answer song way better than fucking Sakura. Meanwhile, Sakura, I, I can't tell you a single thing, I can't tell you a single thing about her art because she doesn't have on the show. Moving on. Actually, you know, I can't tell you one thing. But, yeah, it, it's not even part of her character. She just, she just did just to promote a, a boring plushie. Moving on. Buffa! Oh boy! Buffa! Everyone's favorite extra writer. Yes. He's an extra. He's not a tertiary. He's not a secondary. The secondary is Tycoon. So, deal with it. Just like how... Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry about, sorry about that. Just like how Garen is the secondary to Blade, while Hajime is the tertiary to Blade, 
Leon Gunn is the extra writer for Blade, and Buffa gives off Leon Gunn vibes, Mooski vibes. And boy, let me tell you, I fucking love Mooski from Blade. I love his arc, but Buffa on the other hand, I did not like Buffa's arc. Don't be dead real. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Hear me now. I. Yeah, I'm gonna be that honest. I think Buffa. I gotta be at the, I think Buffalo was one of my least favorite characters in the show because I did not feel any sympathy for the character. The beginning, I liked him. I thought he was really cool. He was, he was really fascinating, interesting. I liked his, I liked his beef, his beef with Ace. But then, uh, the second, but then, uh, when he died and came back, the second arc ruined his character for me. And I just did not care for him. Because his second, his whole, his whole arc was based on him saying, "Oh, ha ha ha! I joined the dark. I joined the villains now, and I'm gonna beat the crap out of Geats and Tycoon and Neon because I'm angry and I got a new power up." That's based on arc. He just his second, his second arc was based on him portraying the Lion Grand Prix and wanted to kill everybody that are common riders. Takahashi basically said, "Poor Oja." From Ryuki for this show, and that's basically it. And trust me, I know Takahashi must really love Ryuki because, my goodness, he will he he wrote for a lot of Ryuki characters and specials and movies. He wrote for the Geats and Revice movie, and oh look at that, Ryuki characters are, Ryuki characters are in that movie. He also wrote for the Blade. He also wrote for the Brave and uh, Ojo spinoff. Just saying. Anyway, Takahashi just basically pull up Oja. But with Oja, at least Oja is fun and interesting. Buffer on the hand is just boring. He didn't do much for me. His second arc is basically well, yeah, yeah. His second arc basically Oja. He just Takahashi just pull a fucking oh, Takahashi just did just took Oja. Said, oh yeah, everything is there. Let's make Buffer into modern Oja. Just well, yeah. He doesn't have anything for him. I love, I love zombie. I love zom. I love, I love his zombie form. Look around. I love Buffer's zombie form. But I did not care for the character. I did not like him. Cool form. Boring character. Moving on. So the next character we gotta talk about is Punk Jack. Oh boy, Punk Jack. I actually, I'm gonna be honest with you. I actually love Punk Jack. Granted, when he died, I was disappointed. When he came back in the final arc, I thought he was cool. I thought, I, I thought like, holy shit, Punk Jack's back. That's pretty cool though. And no, I did not watch the Punk Jack special. Why? I did not care for it. Moving on. I actually, I actually enjoy Punk Jack's character. Granted, I want, granted, granted at the end when he basically became a well, sponsor, well, the management for the G G DGP. I'm like, wait a minute. So, I forgot his, we got his, uh, his grandfather or his dad, one of the two, was the, was a, was a manager slash sponsor for the Zyde Grand Prix. Then that basically makes him the exact same. Okay. Also, but, also, punk, not Buffer. Punk Jack had one of my favorite suits in Geeks, so moving on. Punk Jack's awesome. I love him. The none of my forehead. He's just a fuck. He's just a guy. He's just a guy that love. That love to. That love to rock and roll. And that's basically it. Moving on. Uh, Glare. Which one? There's so many Glare. Let's talk about the first user. I like him. I do find it funny though that uh, his actor said when Geese was there. Before Geek there, oh no, I'm not gonna become a common writer. Around like the like, around like what the eleven or twelve or fifteen episode, homeboy became a common writer. Well, that secret was that secret was horrible. Was terrible to keep it to keep. Granted, I'm gonna guess the actor didn't know he he'll become a common writer in the script. So fair enough for that. But yeah, uh, Glare. I like Glare. I love the. F I love his debut henshin. The suit, awesome. The red and black and purple fits well. And yeah, 
So let's so let's, so let's talk about glass second user beta ball. Oh, beta ball. Jeez. Okay. In the beginning, I was interested to in know who's this girl, and what, and why is she. I'll just, I'll just don't know her name. Who is this girl, and why is she so fascinated with Buffa? Then we find out. Oh, okay, she's from the future, and uh, she's and she's a thousand year old woman. Oh, so I want to point this out. For I want to point this out. I want I want to make a little rant here. This is this this is this isn't about the actress. No, this is about the character. I know, I know. This is about the actress. People are getting way too comfortable in the token immunity for uh, who are grown ass men who are having who are simping for beta bot. And yeah, I f it's fucking disgusting. You know what I'm talking about? If I'm not gonna say the word here, okay? I'm not trying to get it. I'm not trying to get this video taken down by YouTube. But I'll let your imagination think about it. Anyway, I like Beta Bob. In the second, in the, well, first half, well, in the first argument, well, second argument, she appears. She didn't do anything. She didn't do that much. In the final arc, she did stuff, but she was annoying as well. And after she died, I looked back and said to myself, you know what? I actually like Beta Bob. She was a fascinating, interesting villain. Granted, she was just. She she was just there at times, but yeah, she's way better than uh, than other past villains that Takahashi wrote for. Talking about you, Kronos, Kuroto, and and yeah, you two arc. Yeah, same for same for Hirobi and other Mecha Jim Rai. Just saying. But if uh, I like Beta Bot. I thought she was cool. She was she was fascinating and somewhat well written, but not perfect. Granted, when she came over Kakaro, she became more interesting. Cause I loved the duel. It was stupid, but I loved it. And they're gonna get me started on their premium forms, the the monster designs. I love it. I love the monster design. I, I, I like Kakaro's way more, but still, I loved it. But uh, yeah, Beta Bot's okay. I wish I wish that she I wish that she did more of the show. But yeah. Moving on to well, we have to make here to talk about god damn it. Okay, so I'm just gonna point this out. The father characters. The girl that the girl that appeared in one episode then then died the same episode, the old man and other random characters. Oh, poof, dead. Moving on. They didn't do much. They were just there for one episode, and that's it. <laughs> Lupo and, uh, well, Sparrow. I like them both. I like Lupo. <laughs> she I find it funny, though. She became a fan favorite after after she yeeted the show. And no, I have not seen the movie yet, so please calm down. I love the fact that she became a fan favorite community after, after her departure from the show. I love Lou Paul, she's one of my favorite female writers. She's up there now because her actors did an amazing performance. And uh well she's badass too, moving on. <laughs> and but yeah, Sparrow, I love this asshole. He's a smart fuck he's a smart, cocky asshole, and I love him. The last time I enjoy a smart, cocky asshole was fucking Evolt from Bill. He isn't Evo, no. But he was a fucking he, he was a fucking piece of shit. But I loved him. He was basically a better version of Kaiser from Fives. Kaiser is a is a smart. Yes, yeah, I'm beyond. I can't even really say that. Kaiser Kaiser is a is a smart cocky asshole. Yes, but uh, <laughs> Sparrow over here is ten times better. He's fun. He's not funny. He's annoyed, but yet, yet he, yet he is one of my favorite characters in the show. And yeah, every time, every time you're talking mad shit, I want to punch him. Also, him killing Sarah, I crossed the line. I need vengeance for what he did to my girl. 
And don't worry, I'm going to talk about Sarah, because i got a lot of things to say about her. But, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, boy. Speaking of Sarah. Sarah Sakura. Well, yeah, Sarah Sakura. Her actress is the, is the oldest sister of Hadika's actress from Dawn Brothers. Yes, the Sina sis, the Siba, I think it's Sina, Sheena, yeah, Sina, uh, sibling. I love the fact how, uh, I love the fact how her younger sister was in Sentai, meanwhile, Hadika's oldest, I love the fact how Sarah's younger sister, well, Sarah's actress's younger sister, who played Hadika, was in Sentai, meanwhile, Hadika's older sister was in Kamen Rider, and they both played good female, her, good female characters. I love Sarah. Move. Okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> okay. okay, let's do this. I want to point this out. I'm a Sarah fan, 100%. And uh, I want to say, I want, I want to be the, I want to be the most honest here with saying this. I hated how Takahashi treated this character. Her whole, her whole. Well, she didn't have an arc. She was both. She was mostly used a plot device for K-Wa's arc. But I hated how the I hated how he pulled a fucking Valkyrie with this character, and that pisses me off. Because Valkyrie's arc was basically connected, or basically did just to help Fu's arc, making really making really what it meant to be a common writer when he when he got his final form, Rampage. Takahashi basically did the exact same thing. Said, "Oh, okay, so let me take so let me go take the stuff I took. Let me go take the BS that I put in zero one." For U.S. arc and put it in Sarah, and I hated it, 100%. I love this kid. Don't get me wrong. I love Sarah kid, but I hated how Takahashi treated her in the show, and that pisses me off. I hate it. The kid, the kid, the kid doesn't deserve doesn't deserve that much hate, and that just that just irks me. I love her. I I love her dynamic, but uh. With, with freaking damn, yeah, sorry. I love her dynamic with fucking, with fucking knee. I kind I say okay. So the best way for the best way for me to say it like this, while Ace and Tycoon are the modern day Tenjo, the modern day Tendo and uh, Kagami, Neon and uh. Neon and Sarah, when they team up, gave off the female modern day version of Ichigo and Nigo for me. Because, granted, Nigo's not secondary. No, he is also he is also a main protagonist in the in the OG show. Sarah reminded me of Nigo because he is technically, like you say. Neon's, not secondary, Neon's partner, backup, you'll say. And I saw what Takahashi was doing with that, and I liked it, because the dynamic was really good and well written. Personally, it's way better, personally, in my opinion, it's way better written than uh, what, it's way better written than uh, what, uh, Kosha did in, uh, Revice for Aguilera and Sakura. But that's just my opinion. But yeah, I like Sarah's character. I hate how Takahashi treated her. That pisses me off. So let's talk. So speaking of characters that piss me off, Glazer, Glazer. Oh God, I, I thought he, I thought he was alright, but at the same time he didn't make a full impact on me. I love his tension, and uh, that's it. Cool suit, you know, it's just a glare repaint. He didn't do he didn't do that much for me. Don't get me started on Sue, because Sue's just, Sue's just there. And I'm going to talk about him a lot, I got a lot of things to say about him. So, if we're talking about, so if we're talking about Glazer, Glazer, let's talk about his, uh, well, his secondary. God, this kid is fucking, what the, what the hell is her name? I don't think she had, wait, what the hell is her name? I totally forgot her name, because she did not do that much in the show. She betrayed, she killed Glazer. 
and basically took his belt and said, Oh yeah, I'm now the pro producer for 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 the Zai Grand Prix. So he told me this hot secretary just killed her boss and just basically said that she's not the producer. She didn't do she didn't do that much. Like for real, she didn't do that much. She just stand there in the she just stand there. The like twenty fourth century like for half the show. Didn't do much. Just had a few lines, that's it. And then she became a villain. Why? I don't know. She didn't do she she was just there. She was just there and that's it. She didn't do much. It sucks too because I, the actress is really talented. I wish that uh, next I wish that uh, I, I wish that uh, I really do wish that next time she get way better treatment in a different Toku show. Granted, I could totally see her being Sentai and Ultraman do way better in those shows because here, Takahashi tree all the female characters like complete shit. Granted, not the first time Takahashi did this BS for his sexist writing. Remember Zero One? If you know what I'm talking about, then uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Glazer's, Glazer's, uh, well, Secretary, hot Secretary, she didn't do jack shit. She, she didn't do jack shit in the show. She was just there. That's it, looking hot and tracked in. That's it. Because I said to myself, I said to myself, okay, so you tell me that, uh, so you tell me this character, so you tell me this character who, who's a babe, by the way, I can't say that, who's hot and gorgeous, who's totally attracted to. She's just there, just looking pretty, and that's it, because she didn't do that much of the show. Because I can't tell you a single thing about her. She's just there. See, it's just there, and that's basically it. Bad about did more than her. Just being honest. Speaking, before I talk about the supporters, let's talk about the villains. As you know, I'll save I'll save the villains for later. <sighs> the supporters, okay. Uh, Coon, I like Coon. At the same time, at the same time, uh, I can't tell you think about Coon. He 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 felt like he felt like a weird. I can't say cut lore. No, that sounds fucked up. He sound like <laughs> low. Sorry about that. Uh. Coon sounds like a, uh, oh god, what the hell. Sorry about that, I'm putting some lotion on because it's me, I'm really ashy. I don't know why I said it like that, but, uh, I can't think of anything about Coon except for his arc connected to Neon, so that's it. Granted, I did enjoy the episode when, uh, when we find out, when we find out the truth that Neon actually isn't human, she's just a re-image, an adult version of her, well, of a different version of Nia who died as a kid by a uh, criminal. Nia's whole arc is based on her trying to be her own person and find a, and find a family and find a family to treat her better and a prince charming. And well, she basically got her wish. So yeah. But yeah, Coon's just there. He's okay. He didn't do much for me. <laughs> Let's talk about my favorite supporter. <laughs> K. Kuro! Don't worry, we're gonna talk about Jin soon. <laughs> K. Kuro, I fucking love K. Kuro. God damn it. Ugh, this guy's a fucking asshole. But at the same time, he was a f He was basically there just to troll people and make Kawas arc way better. <laughs> Because they do basically, they do basically what one of the main influence, one of the main influence for turning KY into an embodiment of what meant to be a, a true common writer. And that's what I love about him. Dude was a hater too, but at the same time, he was, same time, him antagonized it, he was watching the back saying, Oh, perfect, I'm gonna use KY to beat this motherfucker's ass. I was like, God damn it, Kekara. You could tell his actor was having a fun time playing the role, and I loved that. <laughs> but uh <laughs> but uh yeah I love Kekiro I, I love it his actor did his, his actor did an amazing performance in this show and uh it was funny as hell 
and hilarious. So moving on. So let's talk about my second favorite supporter in the show, Gene. Oh boy, the Ace fanboy. I actually like Gene because I thought I thought his relationship with Ace was really fascinating. He was he he did felt a little creepy in the beginning, but later on he felt like you could kind of like a mentor to Ace by giving Ace a lot of advice on what, on what to do for battle. And also his suit in the beginning, I hated it. I actually did hate it. But later on, Patrick on the shows, when he used it more, I loved it. And also, I love Mark. I love Mark II Boost because that that suit looks that, that suit look, that suit works so good. So anyway, yeah, Gene's cool. I I can't wait when I when I ever get like, I can't wait when I ever get a chance to go pre-order his figure art because well I gotta go do that eventually. Granted, I gotta go find me to, I gotta go find me to pre-order Glaya and Glazar, but uh, hey, I'm not hungry for them. But uh, yeah, overall, yeah, overall, I uh, I actually, I, sorry. Overall, I actually like Gene. He's really cool. <laughs> he didn't, but no, he did. He did way more than uh, Glazar's, than than Glazar's uh. Uh, secondary, cause well, I took a call hot secondary, hot secondary, cause he didn't do jack shit it's for for the final episode, for the final arc in general. She was just there, just kill her boss. And, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not betraying you because plot reasons. And, yeah, Tiger Hachi really just said, let me use this pretty lady just because, just because how track this is, and that irks me. Using someone's look. Just for the character, it's way really stupid and not the best thing to do. Granted, ah, no, granted, a lot of TV shows does that and it irks me so, so much. One of one main reasons why I didn't like Loop. One of one, one of one. Blah. Hold on. Sorry about that. You wanna know one? Damn. You wanna know why one main reason why I didn't like Loop and Ranger for Potter Ranger? Because Pilot Paint's character was just there on the screen just to look pretty and that's it. Cause he see, cause he didn't do that much. He didn't have an arc, he didn't have a character, she was just there just to look pretty. And the and the writers use her, use the actress's looks it use the actress look just just because how pretty she is, and that irks me. And that's basically it. And then uh, Takahashi basically did the exact same thing to to uh to Glazar's hot secretary character in this show in Geats. But back I say about Jin, I like Jin, he's cool. I, I, I got a pretty figure out one day and I like his tension pose. Also I love the fact how his suit is basically basically a fox looking suit, a techno version, Grant. Because well, he is Ace his supporter, so those are that too. I have not heard his into the song with Ace, so please forgive me. So moving alongside from that, let's talk about our villains to show. God, so many fucking villains. I already talked about half of them, but let's talk about Sue and uh, Jean and Jet. Sue, he's basically a. He's basically a somewhat boring, also a little bit tolerable, tolerable, very tolerable, tolerable, tolerable version of Kronos and Storius from X A and Saber. Granted, I'm not the big fan of Storius because I find I find Storius character and the whole reason why he became evil fucking dumb and bad writing. I became evil just because. I want to make stories. Wait, that's it? You only became evil just because you wanted to make stories? Yes. That's it. So you're telling me this whole time Toma and others were fighting fighting your men <laughs> and saving other people for pointless reason? For boring character arcs? You became evil just because you wanted to make a story? Yes. That's dumb as hell. 
and yet people praise you, yet people defend you for this garbage ass, mid ass, mediocre show. God, fuck you, Storius. I did not hate Saber. I, no, I, don't, I, don't, I do hate Saber. <laughs> At least Sue here felt like a somewhat villain. I cannot stand Kronos. Kronos did not do jack shit in x Except for being there and whining like a bitch. Sue was somewhat like that. But at least Sue was less annoying. Hell, he also did. Also did. He fed in Gifu. Because Gifu is just a walking vagina in Revice. Sue here, Sue here basically just said, Okay, you know, let me go piss off a lot of people. Just, just for the fuck of it. And that's basically what he did. That's why I like Sue. Fuck. <laughs> he just pissed. He was just there just to piss off people. And I loved him because of that reason. Fuck. Him being a final villain having some type of ass pull BS power. I'm like, okay, you know what? Let him cook. Let him, let him do the most BS thing ever for this show. And he fucking did it. And I loved that because of it. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, fucking ay. He gave... Sue reminds me of Evo and Gold Drive. Gold Drive... Gold Drive could not accept defeat by Sinosuke and the other. He just had to... He just had to pull some type of BS at the end. And Sue reminds me of that in Evo too. I love that. I love Go Drive. He's one of my he's one of my favorite writer villains. Underrated in my opinion. I don't talk about that much, but yeah. Sue is Sue is basically the modern version of F O and Go Drive. And that's basically what I got from the guy. Fuck, I might have said it. I th I think I think Sue might have to be in my might might have to be in my complete trio of favorite writer villains. But Evo, Go Drive, and Sue himself. Okay. My trio is fuck my holy trinity is completed. <laughs> Let's fucking go. So uh let's talk about Jeet. Oh boy, Jeet. Well first off, shout out to my friend Mr. Cooper ninety two because well I don't know Va I don't know if you watched it, but hey Vaughn, it's Boku. <laughs> I want. I'm, I'm gonna talk about your man. Your well, well, yeah, your man himself. So hear this. Hear this clearly. Hear this. Come hear this from me. I guess I'm weird. But anyway, he's okay. Granted, his actor. Granted, his actor Ray Bay Head. He wasn't Forza. Cause I don't. I don't remember him being Forza. But uh, he's okay. Like this Sue. He was kicking ass. His right his, his writer form was stupid. Granted, granted, it looked better on Sue than him. While at the same time, it was just a freaking repaint of the visions of the well, well, it was just a repaint of the Vision Driver with the with the with the glass that glazer suit and the Ultra's Vulcan's um piece from 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 Vulcan assault form. And yeah, I say I say to my friend, what was the point of Bandai hyping up the glare driver when yet they made a final version that was just a crappy derp repaint? I just don't get Bandai, cause it's just stupid. Why why hype why hype up this one driver? The next thing you know, oh yeah, here's this driver, just the final version final version that's a derpy repaint. Stupid. Just stupid. It's just stupid. Granted, it's Bandai and well, they don't care. <sighs> I thought Gene was okay. That's it. He didn't do that much for me. I thought he was okay. But, uh, yeah. Now that, now that we got all the kids out of the way, from the, from the, from the, Mem from, from the ones that from the from the least memorable to the ones I like. Let's talk about the plot for the show. And 
something. So I'm gonna say, Aaron, what the hell is the plot for Geats? Oh, simple. Okay, uh, basically, from what I got, Ace pretty much, Ace pretty much exists in different, different eras as different people. And, uh, when he, uh, in his mission began to show him trying to find his missing mom. He finds out that his missing mom was the goddess of all creation. And, uh, the whole time that he was entering DGP, he was trying to find a way to save her. And when he found out that his mom was, well, the goddess of all creation, Takahashi basically just pushed a Jordan Shump plot armor device and said, okay, you know what, I'm going to put some plot armor and let Ace, and let Ace talk to his mom so he become the next god of creation. How does the show, how the hell does a show that talk about Battle Royale come from that to a show talking about our main character pulling the most shonen jump anime plot armor and becoming a god? Bro, well, this show's basically, it, this show's basically if Gaim took a shit on the Battle Royale side and just became stupid with God Complex with a mixture of Kabuto and two times speed. And you basically get, you basically get geeks. You can have basically what it felt like for watching this show. It's so fucking weird. I love this show, don't get me wrong, but bro, at the same time, what the hell is going on? Ay ay ay. Geet is, Geet is so weird. I love it, but at the same time. Ah, oh God, it's so weird. The first arc was ba the first arc was a good introduction to the characters and and what and what foretold for the arcs. I love the I love the I love the first arc because it was it was an introduction to our three main our three our three writer for the show. I say three. Our primary a secondary tycoon and tertiary neon. I love their relationship. It was so fucking good. It was perfect harmony. And also them buying over Sopa. Hilarious. I love that. What the hell happened in the second arc? <laughs> it, it was... God, I hate the second arc so much. Buffer basically became all mighty powerful for no reason. Just because. Because of plot, I did not like because I'm gonna be honest, that arc ruined Buffer's character for me. And yeah, it's funny though because when that arc was happening, the episode with Raculous debuted in his Ranger form, that that episode was way better than the one that that King O's episode was way better than this one Geats episode. Granted, I'm not the biggest fan of King Oldrick. I think King Oldrick's kinda of mid. But uh yeah. If you want me to talk about King Oja one this day, well, like this video, comment, support it, and uh, let's see what's going to happen. But, uh, like I said, yeah, I did not like the second arc. I thought it was slow, it lost my attention, not fully, but, I think, but yeah, so it lost my attention 50% of the show, 50% of the time. I just thought it was mediocre as hell. And don't get me started. And don't get me, don't get me started because the show, the show. This is common. Remember I'm saying no one can stay dead. This is so this show when Ace got Ace and Tycoon got eliminated. When Sarah became a member of the DGP to revive Kawa. I wanted to know one thing. What was the point of killing Ace to make him come back and helping Buffa in his weird arc? You're trying to say, oh yeah, oh yeah, Ace is now Ace is now rebelling, rebelling against against the DGP, and uh, he did that. He got a new power up. He became a god, and that's he became he, he became the game the game master of, of his own desire Grand Prix. If that's not the most BS bullshit thing I ever heard that from from come right now. I know that. Granted, what I'm saying this, this, this is the same show that has a fucking guy who is who is fruit Jesus. Ace 
Ace became God, and Kota literally fruit Jesus. Granted, I'll t granted I'll take Ace over well, over uh, over mid any day. Yes, I call a guy mid. Fight me. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, he the se the second and third arc felt weird as hell. And hey, speaking of third arc, what the fuck was the third arc, boy? Bruh, this show felt like watching a BS anime nonstop. Okay, let's okay, okay. First off, first off, tycoon tycoon coming re tycoon Kawa coming realization for an arc that uh. He can't, he can't resolve everything with vengeance. When yet, his whole arc was him trying to fit, his whole arc was him dealing with that. With him meant to be a common writer. And I saw, and I get the hidden message that Ace was trying to say that a common writer did not kill. You can't say everybody, and I got that. I got that, I got that, I got that. I got that hundred percent for K Y. Like, again, he again, K Y. The living embodiment of a comrade. I understand his arc, one hundred percent. But at the same time, I felt like Takahashi really wanted to make K Y. A really more edgy version of Daiji. You know, well, hold on. It felt like Father like Takahashi really wanted to make an edgy, <clears throat> dark version of Daiji from uh, from Weavice for KY. It just it just didn't work out for him. <sighs> I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know. It felt like Geese was having an identity crisis in the second and third arc, but. At the same time, after Tycoon's arc ended, they, they they figured out what uh, I had a feeling Takashi figured out what he wanted to do after Tycoon's arc ended and finished the whole show. And he somewhat did it good. Somewhat. Not perfect. But it's almost landed. I'll say a 90% the, the, the ending landed. The, uh, the final arc landed. Okay, no, I'll hit back around uh, eighty percent. There were there were some weird moments in the final arc writing that felt dragging. That that felt like really dragging at times, and I, I wish that it didn't. <laughs> Granted, no, it's not on the same level as dragging like Weavite's second half or Hibiki's or Kabuto's kind of. But no, it felt. Dragging as hell after Tycoon Arc ended, and I just wanted, to, and I just wanted to show, I just wanted to show to end. Like, okay, for example, when Buffa fought Beba, I thought the fight was okay. It wasn't my favorite because it was not the hype. Granted, the community hyped that shit up because they all wanted Buffa had his final form. Yeah. He isn't getting a final form. Oh wait, you're wrong. He got one in the V Cinema. Suck it, broke you. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. But uh yeah. I'm gonna be honest, his V Cinema form looks cool, but at the same time, it's it's okay, and that's it. It just kept bashing from other parts from the show and other comedy seasons, so moving on. Granted uh, all the parts that are used for Buffer's new form are reissued from past Takahashi uh, projects. Geats, XZ, and I think Zero One. But yeah. <sighs> anyway, yeah, I anyway, yeah, I thought the final arc was. I thought the final arc, I thought the final arc pacing was at eighty percent good, but at the same time it was dragging as hell. I just wanted it. When a uh, tycoon fought Kikara, Kikara, I was, I, I actually loved that fight. I thought, yes, this fight's really good. 
good writing, good directing, good acting. It was really good to end K-Watt arc. When Neon, when Neon's arc ended with her father, Time Fire, oh, I forgot, to, I forgot to about Time Fire. Time Fire's in the show. He's a character that didn't do much. Granted, he was just there, just, he was just there, just for Neon's arc, for her to give her abusive family and deaths. And I'm going to be honest, I loved, I loved his actor, but I felt like his actor could have done, could have done better in a uh, time. I felt like his actor could have, well, I can't even say it. And that's the sort of Time Ranger. <laughs> because he was okay in this show, just not perfect. Granted, if he's granted if he's ever in Ultraman or let's say Garo or a Naruto show, I would have been I would have been down. I cannot wait to see how I cannot wait to see what he does in the future for Toku. But yeah. Please put him uh, please put him in Ultraman. And let his Ultraman pension sequence be a t be be a mod to Time Ranger, to Time Fire, because that was his henchman sequence in Geek was paying homage, it was a reference to his Sentai work from Time Ranger. He even said it himself, his henchman sequence for his Conway suit in uh, Geek was a what paying homage for the henchman for Time Ranger, for Time Fire, I'll say. You know, the, the Ranger suit that he played in the show? Anyway. I love Time Fire. Moving on. Anyway, uh, anyway, yeah, uh, I felt weird. You can say, no, 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 sorry. I felt weird. You can say, the third arc felt like it was dragging, like a lot. I just wanted to end after. I just wanted to end. I did like. I did like her K-Watt arc. Somewhat was perfectly handled at the end. Well, it was bumping the second half, well, in the second arc, but uh, it got better in, in the third arc. And uh, after he beat Kekawa, I love what the, I love what the show did for his did for him, telling him what it means to be a common rider. And that's what common is all about, though, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah. The third arc felt weird. It went uh when when Ace fought Sue multiple times, like, oh my god, how many times this guy how many times this fucker Sue is gonna not die? Again, he's like gold driving Evo. He can't fucking die. Why did he not kill Ace? Why did Ace not beat him? For BS plot reasons, that's why. I mean, let's be honest, guy. This is Common Rider, okay? Common Rider has a history of not killing off the villains because of BS reason. Build, X-Ray, Ghost. No, well, kind of a ghost. Saber. Fucking, like what, Drive? I want to say Double as well, but nah, not really. Oles. Because, because, sorry, but Dr. Mac, but Dr. Mac, he wasn't that good of a villain. He was just, he was just there just because. That's it. And I find his plot of him wanting to be the last human on Earth really stupid. Yeah, Doctor Mike is not a good villain for for olds. Granted, I don't, I don't like olds, but uh, still, I don't hate it. But anyway, but yeah, but uh, yeah, the final arc felt like it was dragging after uh after Kawa after Kawa uh character arc development ended. So, what are my thoughts on the ending? Uh, before I talk about the ending, let's talk about Tsunami. I haven't talked about her. Ace's somewhat, you kind of say, sister? Because, well, she became his, she became her, she became his brother when his wish happened. Tsunami uh, was, she's good, but at the same time, she became a... I don't know where plot device in the final arc of the show because he brought Ace back from the dead. And the fact that the show treated her at time like modern like the modern Izu kinda of born because Takahashi has this issue where he makes a female uh a female support character and doesn't do much for her. He did this in Zero One, he did this in X A with Puppy. 
and uh, he kind of did it here with a geek with Tsutome. Her only po her only her only purpose in this last arc was just to well uh, support Ace and others, and not become a goddess. But yet, besides that, she doesn't do that much. She didn't do that much except for just for being like a NPC in the first two arcs. It sucks though because I really like the actress. I seen her work in Garo. It sucked that uh, she didn't do that much here. I really do hope in the future that uh, when she's like in a different Toku show, she get way better treatment than the one here. Because yeah, her character was probably one of the worst ones. And the fact that and also I did not get the big hype for people uh, simping for her. I thought the character was. Okay, but at the same time, these are the same people that simp for uh, Izu and Azu. Yeah, I'm like, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys are really down bad for a fucking robot? That's just sad. I just didn't get the hybrid Sumate's character, and, th and I thought her arc wasn't the best. I wish it could have been better, but uh, unfortunately, Takahashi, as always, liked to treat his female support characters in these shows like completely garbage. He did it to Popey and XZ, he did it to EZ01, Nico, no, Nico was the only one that managed to survive because her arc was connected to Taiga's, and that's it. Besides that, Tsunami didn't do that much in the show, except for being a goddess out of nowhere and bring Ace back to the dead just because of plot, and that's basically it. So, back on to the ending. What do you think of the ending, Aaron? What, what do you think of the ending, Boku? My bad. Uh, the ending was that <sighs> okay, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, that ending was uh, the ending was how can I say this? Okay, uh, the ending was good. It wasn't perfect, but uh, is it better than Revice? I love the final battle more than Revice, yes. But between the two of them, I didn't get I didn't get sentimental for this ending. I got a uh, Tendo, I got like a Kabuto vibe, you kind of say with it. But at the same time, I got like a double vibe and a little bit of a drive vibe from it. And goes as well. Build, yes. But uh, I thought the ending was good, but not perfect. Did I get more than Revice? Personally, for me, this might be a hot take. As much as I don't like Zero One, I think Zero One had the better ending for the show with the prologue that takes place before the uh, realized before the summer movie, uh, the the winter movie, realized time. But yeah, if I if I had to rank the ending for Raywall shows, it has to be Zero One, Saber, Geats, kind of yeah, Geats and Revice. And uh, yeah, I thought the ending for I thought the ending for Geats was good, not perfect, but good. Granted. Felt like Takahashi just took a. It felt felt like Takahashi just took a BS book out of Gaim because well, Urobuchi did did a lot of BS shit in Gaim, and yet people, yet people, yet people still praise the shit out of that show. Anyway, felt like it felt like uh, Takahashi took a book out of Gen Urobuchi from Gaim. Say, okay, you know what? Since Gen Urobuchi did this BS in Gaim, and uh. Freaking uh, Kobayashi did some BS in Ryuki. Let me take some stuff out of both shows and put it in Geach's ending. And uh, yeah, that's it. And that's basically what. That's basically Kamui Geach's show. Kamui Geach's ending in a nutshell. He took he he took shit from the past other Battle Royale predecessor shows and took stuff from other Kamui season ending and made a big. Hot pile of mess with it, and uh, yeah, I think the, I think the ending was a hot mess in general. Not one of my favorites. It's not bad, no, just not one of my favorites. 
But, uh, what do I think of Geese overall? Did I get more than Revive? Is it the best Ray Wars show? Uh, let's see. Okay, uh. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, I think Geese is, if I'm going to be honest, if anyone, if anyone wants a show that's action-packed, that has like a lot of cool suits, cool soundtrack, and OST, good character, writing at times, fit, fit for me, I'll say Geese is basically that show. I can see this show being the modern-day Kabuto for Reiwa. Zero One gave me a Heisei vibe because, well, Yuya Takahashi, because he, because he wrote, he wrote, he wrote for the exact same show, he wrote for Exit as well. I didn't like Zero One due to the fact that the writing for that show was pretty bad. Just saying. <sighs> Zero One didn't feel like Reiwa, it felt like Heisei, unfortunately. Saber felt like it was trying to be like Common Rider. It's just uh that show went with that show tried to focus on Thomas Amnesia for the first arc. Then uh after the first arc he remembered everything and uh yeah, that was that was basically Thomas arc in the show. It was just focused on his whole arc his whole arc finished in in the first in the first chapter, in the first chapter of the show, and uh, yeah, at that time, at that time, it became an NPC. Saber felt like it. Saber felt like it was trying to be like Common Rider, but at the same time, it just didn't land. And I say that because Ichigo's after, Ichigo after had mad respect for Thomas after for for being com for being a Common Rider and when Saber was there, and I actually agree with him. The show itself. What the show itself felt like Ghost 2.0 and it was mediocre. So yeah. So anyway, uh what's next? Oh yeah, Revice, okay. I wanted Revice to be like I wanted Revice to give me like a shore vibe for it. But unfortunately Revice was like Revice had a lot of good ideas, yes. But unfortunately due to a lot of reason behind the scene and how the show treated, and how the show fan base reacted to the show due to reason I'm going to here, if you know, you know Revice got the short end of the stick, unfortunately and, uh, yeah I want to point this out no, I do not hate Revice it did get the short end of the stick and it felt, it, it was a letdown for me Geets the writing is perfect but I can see this show being I can see I can see myself recommending this show to anyone. And they're gonna ask me, hey Broku, what are what token shows in Ray Watch should I check out? I'll say honestly, uh Comrade Geats, Machine Sentai Kira Major, Kaiji Sentai Gokaiger, Avatar Sentai Dawn Brothers, uh Ultraman Decker, Z and uh Blazar and uh yeah, that's it. I can see me. I can see miss I can see myself recommending these Toku shows to a friend who want who want to get into Toku. You uh, know, yeah. I'll say this. I can see Geeks be. I can see Geeks be recommended for a friend, and I'm totally on board for them to watch the show and support and support them. Cause this show's really good. Granted, it didn't land perfectly due to Takahashi's writing being stupid and BS at times for female characters and other stuff. But overall, I like Geeks. If I had to rank the show, I'll give it a B. Not B minus, not A, not S, a B. An 8 out of 10. One of my favorites, I had to say. Actually, funny enough, it actually, it actually made my list one of my favorite comedy shows. But yeah, Geeks is really good. Came in for Gotchard. But yeah. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, follow all my social media description. And, oh yeah, by the way, I haven't I I said in my buffer video, 
I have an idea for a new idea called Comet Talk, which basically is me talking about a comic book that I read, and that why I love it, or don't like it. If you want to hear more, comment down yes in the description, and I will get, and I will, well, and I will get, well, I want to see, the, comment down in the description below if you guys are down to hear me talk about comics on the channel, because I've been trying out a lot of new stuff, you guys are really liking it. Like, no joke. Like, no joke, though. My freaking Spider Green video got, like, well, like, wrong, like, what, wrong, like, what, 300 views? You guys love the shit out there. In the Tycoon video did that well. It was successful. And thank you for loving that video, by the way. And, uh, yeah. If you're down for me to talk about comic book on the channel, if you're down for me to talk about comic book on the channel, comment down below. Yes, Boku, talk about comics. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's all. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow all my shows in the description. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, next. Yeah, uh, in October, I will be I will be live streaming Marvel Spider-Man 2 on this YouTube channel. Why not Twitch, Boku? I decided that I'm not going to use Twitch anymore. I wanted to give it a test one on summertime, see how I react to it, and I came to the realization that Twitch drained the crap out of me every time I stream on there. So, I'm thinking for YouTube from now on. So, yeah. But October happened, I will be live streaming Marvel Spider-Man 2 on my YouTube channel. And, uh, yeah, come by with that app. Yeah, come down. Come by when that happened, and you will watch me play Spooder Man. And uh, yeah. <laughs> My name's Aaron. I'm out. And have a nice day. Peace. I'll see y'all. I'll see. I'll talk to you guys when Gotcha happens. Bye.